Welcome everyone to another installment of Sock Level 1. Try Hack Me, where I go over the Sock Level 1 module that teaches you how to become a Sock Analyst. Let's get started. The Cyber Kill Chain, the next part in the Cyber Defense Frameworks Network. I noticed that the first two modules had a lot more of the day-to-day -day stuff that I do at my current position. So this stuff is more of a framework to understanding how a hacker goes about hacking stuff. So these aren't necessarily things that you have to map out on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is something that you have to be cognizant of the different steps that may occur throughout an incident or a compromise or a breach to a computer or a company, what have you. So because these are such high level concepts and there's not a lot of the day-to-day -day work that will necessarily help you with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm kind of just gonna gloss over. You definitely want to dive in, understand these concepts, read everything, go to all the sites. But instead of spending too much time explaining every single concept, because there's, there's entire courses for each of these different modules, for the sake of the length of the video, I'll be quick. The term kill chain is a military concept, structure of an attack. So you got the recon, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, actions and objectives. You wanna read through that, click the question done button. It goes over reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is a very commonly used term in, in cybersecurity. I like to use the, the buzzwords when I do ticket notes just because I can. So OSINT is open source intelligence. I'll say something along the lines of a brief OSINT into the sender found them to be related to the company, blah, blah, blah. It'll give you some tools like the OSINT framework. A coworker of mine uses this a lot. He specifically uses the do domain name who is records here, but this is a lot of different resources that you can go into to learn how to OSINT and how to perform reconnaissance. What is the name of the Intel gathering tool? OSINT framework, the one we just went over. What is the definition of email gathering process during the stage of reconnaissance, email harvesting? They went over that over here where malicious actors can go about multiple ways on the dark web or on public services to harvest emails, which will then comprise their phishing email campaigns. So if your email is leaked, you might find yourself a target of phishing. So make sure you keep those emails private. After a successful reconnaissance stage, Megatron is our bad actor. We'll be working on crafting a weapon of destruction. I learned a little bit here about VBA. If you want to learn about macro or VBA, please refer to the intro to macros for script kitties. I read this briefly. So again, this is just teaching you about the next stage weaponization, what they use to prepare to break into your stuff basically. And one of the methods is a macro that can be used through Visual Basic for applications, Microsoft Office documents. I've seen this from time to time in my current position. It's usually in the form of an Excel document, oddly enough. Sometimes a Word document, but there are those macros that as soon as you download an attachment on a phishing campaign and then you open it, it'll deploy this. And so that's definitely something to be aware of. Without having proper defense in place, like an antivirus or an EDR, you might not be able to stop this and you might not be able to detect it. So this goes to show phishing is one of the number one ways of deploying these weapons. So finally, Megatron decides to choose the method for transmitting the payload. He chooses any one of these three, phishing email, distributing infected USB drives, watering hole attack. You can read through these briefly. Phishing is obviously what most of us know phishing to be. Distributing infected USB just means leaving an infected USB near a business and hoping someone plugs it into your computer. Watering hole attack is by compromising a website. Once they're there, they'll, they won't they will think the site's malicious because it's a website that they visit all the time. They'll grab whatever file they're trying to get, they'll run it and then Boom, compromise. What is the name of the attack when performed against a specific group of people? Watering hole attack. So exploitation goes hand in hand with delivery. Delivery is how they're gonna do it. Exploitation is them actually doing it. So in this case, Megatron got a little creative and he created two phishing emails because they're, like I said, they're the most common ways of compromising systems. Got a fake Office 365 login page and another one containing a macro attachment, which is what the VBA that was mentioned before. He successfully delivered his exploits, got two people to click on the link. They didn't have the email filters that we have, so it's sad for them. So after he gains access to the system, this is the point where they're gonna try to pivot. They're gonna do lateral movement, which is as CrowdStrike defines it as moving deeper in the network to obtain that pie, sensitive data. And then it has here another resource for you to learn about vulnerabilities, OWASP top 10. OWASP is very commonly known. It'll open up the OWASP room top 10. It might also use a zero day exploit. You'll notice that in a lot of these, it kind of gives you prepped for the terminology that you need to know. So not only do you get hands-on experience, but you'll learn the words that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can sound as pretentious as my coworkers. Zero day exploit is just an exploit that's never been seen in the wild. So we don't really have a patch for it because somebody figured it out and deployed it. 
it for the first time. If you provide a name for the cyber attacking software, it's a zero day. Installation. So again, this goes over the keywords that you're going to need to know. Stuff like installing a persistent backdoor. That is so they have access to it where they're attempting to make sure that they don't lose access to the system. There's a room here that you can check out to learn about achieving persistence on Windows. You can install a web shell using Meterpreter. I did a lot of work with Meterpreter in my cybersecurity degree, so it is very well known, commonly used by penetration testers. And then it brings up the MITRE attack framework for modifying Windows services, stuff like scheduled tasks, registry, stuff that starts up on boot. So if you restarted your computer, it would restart their malicious DLL or the malicious script that is stuck in a scheduled task and it just allows them to reconnect to the computer even if you restart the computer. And then in this phase, the attacker can also use Time stomping, which is not something that I used that was in my vocabulary before, but it sounds fantastic. It will bring you to the MITRE framework. Adversaries may modify file time attributes to hide the fact that they changed a file. This might not be something that EDR or your antivirus triggers on. Most will have a registry was modified type of alert, but they generally, as far as I've seen, they, there isn't a, a file time modifying the timestamps. This is more so if somebody was performing an investigation and they looked at the timestamp on a file and they would gloss over the fact that, oh, it wasn't modified, so it couldn't possibly have been the malicious file. This is something very sneaky and shady and good to know. You provide the technique used to modify file time attributes. Time stomping. Can you name the malicious script planted by an actor on the web server to maintain access to a compromised system? It's a web shell. Command and control. So after they dig their claws in your system, they make sure that they have persistence and they can continue to have access to it, they'll make that system become a beacon. It's called a CNC or C2 beaconing. Type of malicious communication between a CNC server, CNC is command and control. The infected host will consistently communicate with the C2 server, providing updates. Maybe it's a bot, a part of a bot network. We don't know yet. We don't know what the malicious actor is intending to do yet. Compromise endpoint would communicate with internal server. The most common C2 channels. And I was thinking about this in the shower. I know all you have those shower thoughts like I do, where there was a lot of DNS questions in one of my interviews. And I think they were looking for an answer like this, or at least something that alluded to this and the importance of DNS. C2 channels will use ports that are not blocked because for the most part, most ports are going to be blocked except for the ones that absolutely are needed for obvious reasons. Port 80 and port 443, this is typically legitimate traffic and it can help evade firewalls. And then there's DNS, you can use DNS tunneling and make use of the unblocked DNS port. If you don't know what the DNS port is, Shame on you. What is the C2 communication where the victim makes regular DNS requests to a DNS server? DNS tunneling. After going through six phases of the attack, Megatron can finally achieve his goals. He can do all these things. He has full access. He can do whatever he wants. He could rank, he could install ransomware if he wanted to. Can you provide a technology using Microsoft Windows that can read backup copies or snapshot of files? Shadow copy. We have an alert actually that detects when a shadow copy was removed and that's a tactic used in ransomware. If you delete backups, then you can't recover from the ransomware. Very important alert to have. Practice analysis. The infamous target cyber attack, which led to one of the largest data breaches in history. Fun fact, I actually worked at Target when this happened. They released a statement. The statement doesn't help you with anything. You can click into it just to read through it be like, I know my facts. You'll notice that it doesn't have anything about reconnaissance because that could be probably a ton of things, but you got weaponization. They use a PowerShell to weaponize something. Then the delivery, they use a spear phishing attack. Then they exploit a public facing site. They used dynamic linker hijack to install some malicious stuff. And then for command and control, they use fallback channels like HTTP and HTTPS and DNS. And then they finally exfiltrated data from the local system. And boom, we have the answer. In conclusion, the cyber kill chain is very fun to know how it works. You don't need to memorize it though. I don't think I've ever been asked this question in at any point during my six months here or any of my interviews, but the actual framework itself, the concepts that go into it are important to know the types of tactics used to achieve all of these individual chains in the cyber kill chain are important to know. Just like other sections in the module, this gives you some keywords and buzzwords that you need to memorize because they those are commonly used in the in the field. Moving on to the next section, you have the unified kill chain. Now, I'm going to just very quickly go through these because this is similar to the cyber kill chain. It kind of just gives you some buzzwords to know about some methodology, the, the framework that attackers use. There's so many frameworks out there that it really doesn't matter a whole lot what framework you're using as long as you understand if you saw the framework 
what goes into it. So what is a kill chain? It's a military term, just like the last one. Threat modeling. Threat modeling is really important. You can pick whatever model you want, whatever framework, but as long as you can explain the importance of each step and how each step can be stopped, then that's gonna be the important part going into threat modeling. I did a little bit of this in my degree as well. What is a technical term for a piece of software or hardware in IT is an asset. This goes for other fields as well. Assets should be well known. It's stuff that has value in your business, in your company. Threat modeling is the is an important procedure in reducing the risk. Uh, risk is kind of our whole point of being. We're here to reduce the risk on a company because you're never gonna drop your risk to zero. As my boss would put it, it's not if you get compromised, it's when you get compromised. So what happens when you get compromised? Can you stop it? Introducing the unified kill chain. Unified kill chain is far more extensive. You've got every section from the previous kill chain and then some. So it breaks down very nicely what each section is about. It gives you how it compares to other frameworks. This is apparently the most updated version. So it gives you a lot more granularity if that's what you want in your framework to show to the board of directors on how we're so amazing at our job. And so what is a year Unified Kill Chain was released 2017? Kind of old now, honestly. According to the Unified Kill Chain, how many phases are there to an attack? There's 18. Right there, 18. What is the name of the attack phase when the attacker employs techniques to evade detection? Now, oddly enough, some of these I kind of just guessed off the top of my head. These concepts have been shoved in my brain so often I just half remember them now. So defense evasion, it's almost common sense really. Evade detection, defense evasion. <laughs> Duh. Moving data from a network, exfiltration. That's just a fancy word for removing data from a network. We use fancy words so our job sounds more important. What is the name of the attack phase when an attacker achieves their objectives? objectives <laughs> Yay. this is very this is very helpful i'm sure you needed a hint on that one initial foothold you can see a foot just so you don't forget reconnaissance weaponization social engineering exploitation persistence defense mission they will use all these things to get their foot in this circle of a door and you have all these steps you can go through they're also going to link you to the miter tactics which you should get familiar with miter framework as a SOC analyst, it's very important that you understand where you can go to build these frameworks to, to understand hacker methodologies. What is an example of a tactic to gain a foothold using emails? Phishing, if you don't already know that, shame on you. Impersonating an employee to request a password reset is a form of what? Social engineering. We have a social engineering option when we close tickets. That's how often this is used. An adversary setting up the command and control server infrastructure is what phase of the unified kill chain? They're weaponizing. There's so many concepts here. I'm sure you're all memorizing this as quickly as I am. Moving from one system to another is an example of lateral movement, but they wanted you to say pivoting. Pivoting is a technique an adversary uses to reach other systems. It's the same thing. Leaving behind a malicious service that allows the adversary to log back into the target is what? Persistence. They want to get back on your system, even if you restart it or reboot it. The phase through, network propagation. This is where they pivot. They discover stuff on your system using stuff like Netstat. Privilege escalation. They get admin access to stuff. That's, oh no, execution. They execute stuff using their admin rights. Credential access. Using their admin rights, they gain access to all the file hashes. And then they move some more to get even more stuff. As a SOC analyst, you pick numerous alerts pointing to failed login attempts from an administrator account. What stage of the kill chain would an attacker be seeking to achieve? Escalating their privileges. Oh no, Mimi cats. I actually know what this was. Surprise. Known attack tool was detected running an IT manager's computer. What is the mission of the tool? They want to dump all the credentials and their file hashes and break them offline and then log into the CEO email and see what they've been looking at or something. Next phase, phase out. This phase wraps up their journey. They're tired, they wanna go home. An adversary's attack on an environment where they have critical access and fulfill their attack goals. They collect stuff. And then they finally shove all the stuff they collected, their password hashes, their credentials, their trade secrets and they use a C2 channel. And in the previous section, we learned about those, about the HTTPS and HTTP, which shouldn't be a thing anymore, but it is. And DNS ports to tunnel to exfiltrate all their data. Impact, if they wanna screw with the company and break everything, they can. Objective, they've done their objectives. The section for objectives is have they done their objectives? Ooh, this is a good question. While monitoring the network as a SOC analyst, you realize there's a spike in network activity and all the traffic is outbound to an unknown IP address. What stage could describe this activity? Exfiltration. But more importantly, what do you do? Do you close it as benign? Do you notify your SOC team lead? So if you learned anything from our previous video, you will escalate this to your SOC team lead because this is a big no-no. Pi has been released to the public 
by an adversary. That glorious pie that we're trying to protect. Now it's a part of a breach. What CA Trout would be affected by this action? This is another buzzword. This is a question I got asked on a SOC analyst position interview. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. If you didn't already know that, you should know that. Confidentiality affects that. You don't want people to know your personal identifiable information. If that gets leaked, it's no longer confidential. Now, we're going to the site. And I got this on the first try. Trust me, I'm amazing. Attacker uses tools to gather information about a system. Reconnaissance, the attacker installs a malicious script to allow them to remote access to letter date. Persistence, the attacked machine is being controlled from an attacker's own server. Command and control, the attacker uses the hacked machine to access other servers on the same network. Same network. Oh, pivoting. The attacker steals his database and sells it to a third party. What phase of the unified action and objectives? And there's your flag. We're amazing. You put the flag in, you get your fancy confetti cookies and you move on to the next section that wasn't as fast as i was hoping that to be but moving on to the next section we have yet another model what is the diamond model it's another model created by people to model breaches and attacks intrusions and incidents click the i read that button what's an adversary it's who you're fighting against what is the term for a person group that has the intention of performing malicious actions against cyber resources it's the operator the hacker or person it says that right there what is the term of the person or group that will receive the benefits from cyber attacks? It's the customer. It's the person who hired the operator. They want that stuff, but they don't want to be the person who breaks in to get the stuff. But they're still liable in the court of law. So don't forget that. Victim. Who's get the target of the adversary? What is the term that applies the diamond model for organizations or people that are being targeted? The persona or the people or organizations. Right there. Correct answer. Capability is also known as skills, tools, and techniques. Provide the term for the set of tools or capabilities that belong to an adversary. It's their arsenal. More buzzwords. Infrastructure is also known as software or hardware. Infrastructure is a physical or logical interconnections. Yes, we know what infrastructure is. And what type of infrastructure do malicious domains and compromised emails belong to? Well, here they split it up into type one and type two. Memorize these. They'll ask that on your next job. They won't. Event, me event meta features. Six possible meta features can be added to the Meta features are not required, but they can add some valuable information or intelligence to the diamond model. You got timestamps, you got phases. These are the phases within the phase. You got the results, direction, methodology, resources. What meta feature does the axiom every malicious activity contains two or more phases which can be successfully executed in succession to achieve the desired result? It's the phase. You up here and read it, you will have known that. You can label the event results as success, failure, and unknown. What is the meta feature related to? Results. To what meta features is this phrase applicable? Every intrusion event requires one or more external sources to be satisfied prior to success. Resources. I mean, you're just matching these one for one for what it says up there, so it shouldn't be too hard. The so social political component describes the needs and intent of the adversary. For example, financial gain. That's a pretty big incentive in the hacking community. Money. That's how I live my life. I'm looking for money. The technology meta feature component highlights the relationship between core features, which are the capability. Question done. Did you read this? Click the button. Practice analysis. Now you go here. Diamond model. You click this. What is the instance response to determine that a group of notorious hackers are responsible for the attack? Determine that a group of notorious, the adversary, the attack occurred on, it's a timeline. The attacker targeted the information, the IT systems. Oh no, it's the victim. They're breaking in. The attacker uses recent malware. It's the resources, they use malware. The attacker stole data from the corporation and sold it. That's the object, no, that's not the objective. That's the result. That's what they want to get done. The attackers gained access using legitimate credentials that were gained as a result of a phishing attack. Uh, gained access using legitimate credentials. Capability. Once the attackers gained access to the network, they pivoted to the internal database and file shares. Methodology, result, capability. Methodology. What? How did they do it? They did lateral movement. The attacker step can be followed using the phases of what cyber kill chain model? It was the top one, Lockheed. And you're done. Got the code. You're on your way to displaying this wonderful certificate on your resume. All right, we are almost there. The next section is the MITRE section. 
This section is a little beefy. I don't want to put this in the same video as these other ones because these were very similar. They're just discussing models and chains. Whereas the miter technique is going into how to use the miter website. Well, that's it for the three threat modeling sections that I thought were related. So I decided to clump them all into one video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.